Which of the following veins is considered the last choice for venipuncture due to its proximity to major arteries and nerves? A. Basilic vein. B. Median cubital vein. C. Cephalic vein. D. Dorsal hand vein. Answer A. The basilic vein lies close to the brachial artery and the median nerve, making it the last choice for venipuncture. Accidental arterial puncture or nerve damage is more likely if this vein is used. What is the primary purpose of using a tourniquet during venipuncture? A. Prevent infection. B. Slow venous blood flow and increase vein visibility. C. Measure blood pressure. D. Control bleeding post draw. Answer B. A tourniquet is used to slow the return of venous blood, causing the vein to distend and become more visible and easier to access for blood collection. Which of the following additives prevents coagulation by binding calcium? A. Heparin. B. Sodium fluoride. C. EDTA. D. Thrombin. Answer, C. EDTA works by binding calcium in the blood, an essential component in the clotting process, thus preventing coagulation. It's commonly used in lavender top tubes. When collecting blood for blood cultures, which step is most critical to avoid contamination? A. Labeling the tubes. B. Using the correct needle size. C. Skin antisepsis before collection. D. Inverting the tubes. Answer, C. Proper skin antisepsis is crucial before drawing blood cultures to avoid contaminating the sample with skin flora, which can lead to false positive results. A hemolyzed blood sample most commonly results from A. Leaving the tourniquet on too long. B. Using a small gauge needle. C. Patient not fasting. D. Drawing from the correct angle. Answer, B. Using a needle that's too small can show red blood cells, causing hemolysis. Hemolysis can alter test results, especially those measuring potassium or LDH. Which of the following is true regarding capillary puncture blood specimens? A. They contain only arterial blood. B. They are best for coagulation studies. C. They are a mix of arterial, venous, and interstitial fluids. D. They require tourniquet use. Answer. C. Capillary blood is a mix of arterial and venous blood, as well as interstitial and intracellular fluids. It is not ideal for all types of testing, particularly coagulation tests. The correct order of draw using the CLSI standard is A. Red, blue, green, lavender, gray. B. Yellow, light blue, red, green, lavender, gray. C. Lavender, red, green, gray, yellow. D. Light blue, green, lavender, red, gray. Answer B. The correct order of draw prevents cross-contamination of additives, blood culture, yellow, coagulation, light blue, serum, red, heparin, green, EDTA, lavender, and glycolytic inhibitor, gray. Which tube color is used for glucose testing and contains an anti-glycolytic agent? A. Lavender. B. Red. C. Gray. D. Green. Answer, C. Gray top tubes contain sodium fluoride, an antiglycolytic agent that prevents glucose metabolism, and potassium oxalate, an anticoagulant. What action should be taken if a patient experiences syncope during a blood draw? A. Leave the needle in until the patient regains consciousness. B. Quickly remove the needle and call for help. C. Apply cold compresses. D. Begin CPR. Answer, B. The first step is to safely remove the needle to avoid injury, secure the site, and call for help. 
syncope can lead to falls or injury if not properly managed. Which of the following complications is most likely if the needle is inserted at an angle greater than 30 degrees? A. Hemoconcentration B. Hemolysis C. Arterial puncture D. Vein collapse Answer, C. Inserting the needle at too steep an angle increases the risk of puncturing an underlying artery, particularly in the antecubital area where veins and arteries are close together. Why is it important to avoid drawing blood from a limb within four line? A. It increases the flow rate. B. It may cause hemoconcentration. C. It can dilute the blood with four fluids. D. It is more painful for the patient. Answer, C. Blood drawn from a site with an active four can be diluted with four fluids, leading to inaccurate test results. Always draw below or from the opposite arm if possible. Which department receives a sample collected in a lavender top tube? A. Microbiology. B. Hematology. C. Chemistry. D. Serology. Answer, B. Lavender top tubes contain EDTA and are used for hematology tests like complete blood counts, CBC, which analyze blood cell components. What condition results from prolonged tourniquet application? A. Hemostasis. B. Hemoconcentration. C. Hemolysis. D. Hypovolemia. Answer, B. Prolonged tourniquet application causes plasma water to filter into tissues, concentrating blood cells and affecting test accuracy, a condition called hemoconcentration. Which site is most appropriate for capillary collection in a newborn? A. Heel. B. Finger. C. Ear lobe. D. Forearm. Answer, A. In newborns, the heel is the preferred site because their fingers are too small, and the ear lobe is no longer an acceptable site due to poor vascularization. What is the maximum depth for a heel stick in infants? A. 1.5 mm. B. 2.0 mm. C. 2.5 mm. D. 3.0 mm. Answer, B. According to CLSI guidelines, the maximum depth for heel punctures in infants is 2.0 mm to avoid damaging bone or tissue. When should the needle safety device be activated after venipuncture? A. Before inserting the needle. B. Immediately after withdrawing the needle. C. Before labeling the tube. D. After the tourniquet is removed. Answer, B. Activating the needle safety device immediately after withdrawal minimizes the risk of accidental needle stick injury and ensures compliance with OSHA regulations. If a phlebotomist accidentally punctures an artery, what should they do? A. Apply a tourniquet above the site. B. Remove the needle and apply pressure for at least 5 minutes. C. Leave the needle in place. D. Continue with the collection. Answer, B. Arterial puncture results in bright red blood and a forceful flow. Remove the needle immediately and apply firm pressure for at least 5 minutes to stop the bleeding. What is the best course of action if a hematoma begins to form during venipuncture? A. Continue drawing. B. Remove the needle and apply pressure. C. Reinsert the needle. D. Ignore it. Answer, B. A hematoma forms when blood leaks into the tissue. The draw should be stopped, the needle removed, and firm pressure applied to minimize bruising and swelling. Which of the following best describes informed consent? A. Patient signs of form without explanation. B. Verbal agreement from the physician. C. Patient agrees after being informed of risks and procedures. D. Implied by patient entering the facility. Answer, C. 
Informed consent means the patient has been educated about the procedure, its risks, and purpose, and voluntarily agrees to it. What is the best method to prevent nosocomial infections during phlebotomy? A. Wearing double gloves. B. Using antiseptic hand rubs only. C. Washing hands before and after each patient. D. Spraying alcohol in the air. Answer. C. Hand hygiene is the most effective method to prevent the spread of healthcare-associated infections. Hands should be washed before and after patient contact. What is the primary reason for rejecting a blood specimen at the laboratory? A. Hematoma at draw site. B. Incorrect tube label or no label. C. Patient complained of pain. D. Phlebotomist wore gloves. Answer, B. An unlabeled or mislabeled specimen can result in serious identification errors, so labs will reject these samples immediately to maintain patient safety and accuracy. When collecting blood from a patient with a known latex allergy, what action should be taken? A. Proceed using standard tourniquets. B. Delay the procedure until allergy is resolved. C. Use non-latex gloves and equipment. D. Use latex only for the tourniquet. Answer. C. Latex allergies can cause severe reactions, so it's essential to use non-latex gloves, tourniquets, and other materials when working with affected patients. Which condition can falsely elevate potassium levels in a blood specimen? A. Hyperlipidemia. B. Hemolysis. C. Fasting. D. Hypoglycemia. Answer. B. Hemolysis causes red blood cells to rupture and release intracellular potassium into the plasma, falsely elevating potassium test results. Which of the following is a sign that the needle may have entered an artery during venipuncture? A. Slow blood flow. B. Dark red blood. C. Pulsing bright red blood. D. No blood return. Answer. C. Arterial blood is bright red and often spurts or pulses due to higher pressure, unlike the slow flow of venous blood. A blood sample for cold agglutinins must be A. Kept at room temperature. B. Placed in a light protected container. C. Chilled on ice. D. Kept warm at 37 degrees Celsius. Answer, D. Cold agglutinin specimens must be kept warm, around body temperature, after collection to prevent the agglutinins from binding and affecting results. The additive in a green top tube is A. Sodium citrate B. EDTA C. Heparin D. Potassium oxalate Answer, C. Green top tubes contain heparin, which inhibits thrombin to prevent blood from clotting, and are used for plasma chemistry tests. What should a phlebotomist do if they are unsure about an unfamiliar test listed on a requisition? A. Call the patient for information. B. Guess based on the tube color. C. Ask the nurse or consult the lab supervisor. D. Cancel the draw. Answer, C. The phlebotomist should always clarify unfamiliar tests with a supervisor or the lab to ensure proper collection procedures and avoid specimen rejection. If a patient refuses to have their blood drawn, what is the phlebotomist's best next step? A. Attempt to draw blood anyway. B. Notify the nurse or physician. C. Mark the chart as incomplete and leave. D. Argue with the patient. Answer, B. If a patient refuses, the phlebotomist should respect the refusal and inform the nurse or physician so further instructions can be provided. Which of the following is considered a critical value and should be reported immediately? A. Glucose 110 mg per deciliter. B. Hemoglobin 13 g dl C. Potassium 7.0 millimoles per liter. D. 
calcium 9.5 mg per deciliter? Answer, C. A potassium level of 7.0 millimoles per liter is dangerously high, hyperkalemia, and can cause life-threatening cardiac complications, requiring immediate medical intervention. A lipemic blood specimen appears. A. Cloudy or milky. B. Dark red. C. Clear yellow. D. Green tinted. Answer, A. Lipemic specimens appear cloudy or milky due to a high concentration of lipids in the blood, which can interfere with many laboratory tests. Which action helps ensure accurate capillary glucose results? A. Use the first drop of blood. B. Collect from the thumb. C. Wipe away the first drop before testing. D. Apply alcohol to the strip. Answer, C. The first drop of blood can contain tissue fluid or alcohol residue, which can dilute the sample. Wiping it away helps ensure accuracy. What is the proper site for a finger stick in an adult? A. Center of the index finger. B. Side of the ring or middle finger. C. Thumb pad. D. Fingernail. Answer, B. The preferred sites for capillary puncture are the fleshy, lateral parts of the middle or ring fingers, avoiding bone, nerves, and nails. When transporting a specimen for bilirubin testing, how should it be handled? A. Frozen. B. Exposed to air. C. Protected from light. D. Chilled with ice packs. Answer, C. Bilirubin is light-sensitive, and exposure can degrade the analyte. Tubes should be wrapped in foil or placed in amber-colored containers. What is the primary risk of using an expired blood collection tube? A. Tube may be underfilled. B. Additive may be inactive. C. Patient discomfort. D. Increased blood pressure. Answer, B. Expired tubes may contain degraded additives, which can result in clotting or test inaccuracies. Always check the expiration date before use. A patient asks what tests are being performed. How should the phlebotomist respond? A. Decline to answer. B. Ignore the question. C. Provide a general explanation. D. Give a full medical interpretation of each test. Answer, C. Phlebotomists should provide a general explanation of the tests, e.g., we're checking your blood count and sugar levels, without diagnosing or interpreting results, which is outside their scope of practice.